My name is Jeff Sturgis. I'm from Whitetail Habitat Solutions, and I'm a whitetail strategy expert. I say that. I love producing strategy content. I like helping people. I want everyone out there to have a great hunt and a better hunt this fall. And I try to provide as much information as possible so that you can do so, whether it's through my YouTube channel, books, web classes. But boy, you know, looking back, and I've said this before in a couple other videos, is that the peak rut is where stories are made from. And this is where stories are born. This is what you talk about. You remember that giant chasing a doe or two giants chasing one doe, or, or you, you hear that step, step, step in the leaves and that steam coming out a buck's nose on a frosty morning during November, during that peak rut. And that's where literally dreams are made of. So this is an exciting time of the year and there's a lot of strategy that goes along with it. And let's dive right into that. Number one, the great thing about the peak rut is does are coming into estrus and they're coming into estrus all day long. It doesn't matter if it's morning, evening, midday, bucks are cruising all day long and they're looking for those does. In the pre-rut, I focus on mornings. During the early season, October lull, I'm focusing on evenings. But when it gets into the peak rut, not only am I focused on morning, I'm focusing on midday and afternoon. So you're really looking at for equal and good opportunity at any time of the day, because you never know when that buck is going to come off one doe, go to another. He's in between does, he's chasing a doe, could be any time, all day estrus, which is awesome because it gives you a lot of opportunity. If you have a day to hunt, you can maximize that entire day. And we'll talk about how to do that. You know, how can you make sure that, you, that you're on deer and you're in great locations all during daylight for that entire day. So number one, during the peak rut, it's exciting because does are coming into estrus all day long and it creates a lot of opportunity for you. One of the things that I like about the peak rut is if you don't have bucks and you've been really down about the pre-rut, what's interesting, if you don't have good bucks on your land, you might not even notice that the rut began and that's why there's rut casts. That's why we came up with rut casts because we use historical and experienced data-backed driven strategies to help you know exactly when the rut's coming in from the pre-rut to peak rut to the post-rut, secondary rut. And so we're looking at that opportunity for you to create an exceptional time to hunt during that entire peak rut day. What's exciting is that you can have bucks that weren't on your land during the pre-rut, but they are coming on your land during the peak rut. And that's a great thing because they can come from a long ways away. We talk about bucks having a home range of three miles. So you might have seen this random buck in September and October come during the middle of the night. He's telling you, I'm not on your land. I've only been there five times in September and October, but what I am telling you is I'm going to be back during the peak rut. We'll talk about when and where in a second, but he's coming back and he can come from afar. And that's why when you're hunting on public land, a little bit different than private land, what I like about private land is you have highly defined food sources where you should be hunting in the afternoon, highly defined bedding areas where you should be hunting in the morning, and you can cheat your stands to those locations so that you can maximize your potential all, all day long. We talk about scoring the set, and we'll talk about that in a second. When it comes to public land, I like finding a cruising opportunity, a great cruising stand, and parking my rear end down on a tree stand and watching that cruising stand all day long. I like to, on public land, I used to hunt in southern Ohio a lot. I've hunted in Michigan, Pennsylvania on public land. But what I like about hunting on public land is that I can get in between some good clear cuts that represent afternoon and evening feeding food sources for the deer herd. I can get on a cruising funnel between change of habitat along a swamp line. I can get on a ridge system, a funnel within a ridge system like a bench or a saddle going across to a, uh, a ridge top where there's that low low spot that deer can just cruise up and over that ridge. Those are all great funnels and I'll sit in that all day long. And that way I'm not moving around. I'm allowing other people on public land to potentially push that cruising buck my way. On private land it's a little bit different. I still like being out all day and there's that opportunity to catch that long range cruiser coming at any moment of the day. But I really like cheating towards morning bedding areas and then afternoon food sources. And typically that means two different stands and that really applies to when you're scoring each set. So when you're scoring each set, what I mean by that is there's an opportunity, let's say this is a perfect morning stand. I'll talk about some morning stands that are between bedding areas. You walk well away from food sources to get in there. If you're sitting on a food source in the morning, likely you're, you're blowing that food source out when you go into the stand in the morning and those deer might not come back all day, let alone the next day, the next day. And so you really have to be careful going into that morning stand. That's why I like 
slipping in the backside of a bedding area with the wind at my advantage and waiting for those deer to come to me. At the same time, as that day transforms into the afternoon and evening hours, those deer that were going to a bedding area in the morning are now leaving that bedding area and going towards food. That means if you're at that bedding area, the closer it gets to dark in the afternoon, the less likely you are to see mature bucks because they're leaving your position and going towards food in the afternoon. So then I like to get out of that stand and move to an actual afternoon, evening food source stand. So I'm looking for food source movement, not necessarily that I'm on the food source, no different than not necessarily am I right in the bedding area. I'm cheating to the outside so that I can always play that long game of hunting tomorrow hunting those areas, trying to preserve those movements. So really a lot of times hunting all day, I'll hunt all day a lot, but that doesn't mean I'd hunt in one stand. I'm changing stands so that I can maximize that time. And let's face it, I say hunt all day, a lot of times those bucks are still taking a break during the middle of the day. They can't keep cruising 24 hours a day. They have to take a break. So that means trying to identify that warm spot in the afternoon where they're taking a break taking that opportunity to slow down a movement and slip to another stand. And so I'm looking at the morning. Let's say this is out of 10. So I'm looking at a morning stand. I'm saying, yeah, this is an eight, nine, 10. This is a good stand. Score of nine out of 10. I'm looking at the afternoon the same way. Is this an afternoon stand? I call it the bottom of the funnel of daylight movement. And that, what that means is you have deer come from a lot of different bedding areas where they're cruising all morning. They lay up a little bit and then they're all going to a food source. What that means is a lot of those trails are coming into one trail, two trails, three, that goes and heads right to a food source. That's that bottom of the funnel of movement. I wanna be in that location in the afternoon, hoping to catch bucks coming from different angles to an afternoon food source, as opposed to all these different varieties of bedding areas where you're spread very thin. So a different stand in the morning, different stand in the evening. I'm looking at 10 out of 10 for both of those. So let's say it was a nine out of 10 in the evening and nine out of 10 in the morning. I just picked up 18 out of 20, that's a good thing. If a buck's been cruising all day, he's likely to hit a water hole during the middle of the day. Maybe a random white oak just for a stop or a bite to eat. Maybe even a very small food source in the middle of the day where he can just slip in, he's comfortable, he's not exposing himself to a big open field, something small that's near a potential bedding area. So I'm looking at a morning opportunity, afternoon opportunity, and then where am I sitting? in the middle of the day. A lot of times where I'm sitting in the middle of the day is where I sat in the morning. I might sit, if it's daybreak at seven, I'm sitting till one or two, and then I'm slipping over to a stand for a nice three hour afternoon sit. That way I can maximize each time period of the day. Now the next point, you're scoring your sit, you're making sure that you're keen on all day estrus movement, you're waiting for that buck that might be coming from a long ways away. You have to remember the peak rut is very fleeting. You're looking at a 10 day peak rut movement. That's when does are really flying around all day, bucks are on the move, they're cruising. I'm looking for long range cruising opportunities. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at, if I'm hunting even in the morning, even afternoon, I don't wanna pigeonhole myself into one stand location that purely relates to a food source or purely relates to a bedding because I wanna take advantage of bucks that are cruising all day. That's where I talk about getting in that perfect X of movement on public land, where you might be between two big clear cuts that represent not only food, but cover you're looking for their long range cruising opportunity. So I'm getting into that X of movement. I'm considering this is a really short period of time. I have to make things happen. But number five and a very important point is that I'm relying on HuntCast and I'm relying on the weather to let me know which days out of an entire 10 day window or a seven day rut vacation that you have that you can look at to maximize your time. I'm looking at, you might have two or three good days in there, three or four average days, and then you might have a couple that are pretty bad. It's very important that you play the long game even though you have a week to hunt or a nine day window to hunt. You're not slipping into your best stand on the first or second day even though there's bad weather, hot weather, windy weather. You're looking at it that there's a great day on day number four, a great day on number seven, a great number day on number eight based on the weather. And I literally plan my days out like that where I'm saving some of my best stands towards those best weather days. And you can almost look at it like, these are average percentage days on HuntCast, I'm hunting average stand locations. These are great days, I'm hunting great stands. And then these bad days, maybe you sleep in, maybe you go to lunch with your friends, or maybe you're still out in the woods, but you pick stands that you don't think are your favorite, they're off to the side, you're still in the woods enjoying the time. And in that way, whether you're scoring your sets, 
you're scoring the days and planning out your whole rotation. You're making sure you're in cruising locations. You're focusing on morning, evening stand locations. You're trying to get the most out of your rotation and making sure that you plan your sits, that you use a high degree of strategy. And again, going back to, boy, the peak rut is exciting. It's an outstanding time to shoot the biggest and oldest buck in the neighborhood. That might be a three-year-old buck in one location, a seven-year-old buck in another, but bottom line is that's when the best bucks in the area typically fall. You're getting a crack at them before most gun seasons begin, and it's an exceptional time for you to be in the woods. And again, it's where dreams are made of. It's where hunting stories are born. And I want you to have hunting stories this year, and I appreciate you listening, taking advantage of Rutcast, taking advantage of Huntcast. The whole reason we have those tools is to help you not only be a better hunter, but to experience the highest level of potential success based on the amount of time and resources you have to put into your hunt this season. I really hope that you can take advantage of these strategies and apply it to a great and successful hunt this fall. That's why we make these. For more information, you can check out my Instagram at Whitetail Habitat Solutions. I also have my YouTube channel, Whitetail Habitat Solutions, Facebook, and also my website, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. On my website, I have over 600 whitetail strategy articles and around 800 YouTube videos. So there's a lot of content for you to digest, and I hope you can continue to learn and continue to apply these strategies to a successful hunt each and every fall.